What's up guys, Dare here with Fantasy Football Vice coming at you with another top 5 video. In this week's video, we're going to be discussing the top 5 wide receivers that you should be targeting late in your drafts. If you've been following this channel for a while during the 2017 offseason, you may have heard about these players already, but to get you prepared for draft day, we'll give you 5 late round targets that you should keep your eye on this season. Now before we do, if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe right now. We are growing every day and we want you guys to join the community. Community. We're going to be posting five videos per week the entire off season. That doesn't stop until the season starts. And we also have an amazing promotion going on for you guys. Pro Football Focus, as you know, the leader in statistics for the NFL, has granted us with a great gift that we pass over to you. It's only valid until July 31st, and that is 10% off of their edge and elite packages nobody else out there can provide this discount and like I said only good until July 31st follow the links in the description box below use our promo code and get yourself a copy set yourself ahead of all your league mates this season and make that money so let's just jump right into it so I'm gonna just start by letting you guys know that this is in no particular order no order whatsoever all these guys you should target depending on your team composition so the first player is Jordan Matthews of the Philadelphia Eagles now what's different about Jordan Matthews than all these other players on this list is normally we do suggest that you guys pick only high upside players when you get into this wide receiver for range. Why is that? Because we're looking for upside. Normally, we don't want a safe floor. But what's special about Jordan Matthews is he is actually at the tail end of the draft, one of the only safe floor players that we would recommend. Some people do forget that he was actually a top 25 receiver the past two years. Excluding last year, he was battling injuries. He did still finish within the top 30 on a points per game basis. So it's safe to say he was coming off of a down year as a whole. But can you really blame the guy? He had a rookie quarterback in Carson Wentz and literally no running game. Jordan Matthews himself, he's not the type of player to be a number one wide receiver. Recently, he's been kind of pushed into that role, but realistically, he is what he is, and that is a solid second receiver playing primarily from the slot. These slot receivers in PPR leagues are what's going to be making you money. They get the receptions, they get the short yardage, and they're used on third downs, play in and play out. So let's back up a little bit. Let's talk about Carson Wentz. Truth be told, he wasn't really good last year. He only threw for 16 touchdowns match that with 14 picks and he didn't even crack 4,000 passing yards essentially he looked like a rookie out there not the kind of rookies that we've been used to with Marcus Mariota Jameis Winston and of course Dak Prescott that's what everybody's comparing him to who is coming off of one of the best rookie seasons that I have ever witnessed and it doesn't help that Carson Wentz and Prescott are in the same division one thing that's going to greatly help Matthews coming into this year is that the Eagles made some significant moves in free agency to help build a supporting cast to help Wentz. The addition of Alshon Jeffrey and LeGarrette Blunt is definitely going to keep these defenses honest. Now while Blunt, he's old and he's not very good, he matches up perfectly with the play style of Darren Sproles, which will make the defenses have to switch gears. Realistically, Blunt will come in, get the short yardage, be a bruiser, then Darren Sproles will just burn them. Each of these runners' strengths are the complete opposite sides of the spectrums. That's going to help keep the these plays alive and give them the best opportunity to move the ball down the field and that's where Matthews will come in his target share is going to be there he's been super consistent in his first two years and he will be the go-to receiver on these third down situations essentially his role is going to be the safety blanket for Wentz like I mentioned before his end of season numbers don't really give a good picture of how well he was playing last year now he wasn't a great player he wasn't in the top 24 or anything but if you give me a player that I can get in the late rounds that's nearly a lock to be in the top 30 on a points per game basis he has a big opportunity to hit this zone and exceed his value he had eight touchdowns in both of the two seasons before that and right now he's being drafted in ESPN at wide receiver 39 and fantasy football calculator at wide receiver 49 for a safe floor player at such a late round value you really can't find that at that point in the draft so what I would suggest is if you are drafting a high risk team maybe you don't go in there intending to do it but the value that fell to you are players like Martavis Bryant Sammy Watkins Keenan Allen you need to go ahead and hedge those picks with some safe floor players and if you miss out on players that have a safe floor players like Diggs Crowder and Sneed these middle round guys 
and you find yourself without that safety, target Matthews in the later rounds. He can definitely be your rock in the flex position. So let's move on. Let's move on to another player who was in Philly at one point, and that's Jeremy Macklin. He's over in Baltimore right now. He's coming off the board at wide receiver 47 in ESPN, wide receiver 37 on Fantasy Football Calculator. And this player is definitely a beneficiary of recency bias. He's leaving the Chiefs over to the Ravens where Joe Flacco is known to throw the ball a ton. He actually came in second in attempts, one attempt shy of tying Drew Brees for the league lead. If you actually go percentage wise of the run slash pass splits, the Ravens actually led the league. And with two receiving backs and a disappointing Terrence West, they have a strong chance to do it again this season. Macklin will lead this team in targets. He's a guy that's extremely underrated from the slot. I've said it before in a previous video, but he's had 12 touchdowns since 2014 from the slot position, which is actually good for fourth in the entire league through that span. And he had a terrible year last year. So you know, coming into last year, he was definitely one of the league leaders. He's going to essentially be filling that Steve Smith role and while Steve Smith was there, he was averaging over 8 targets per game. If you're giving me a late round guy that's going to get 8 targets per game, I'm going to jump all over that. That target share would put him in 16th place in the league. Then you have to factor in Macklin has a career catch rate of 60% and an even higher catch rate from the slot position. That number eerily resembles Steve Smith Sr.'s catch rate in his 3 year tenure with the Ravens. If Macklin's able to transfer that catch rate over to these new targets that he's going to be receiving, he's going to be in for a very respectable season. I mean, if you think about it, if Macklin could be a fantasy asset with the Chiefs who hardly ever throw the ball and didn't even have a touchdown to the wide receiver position the season before he went there, he can find success transitioning into one of the most pass-friendly offenses in the league. So an argument can always be made that he's joining a new team, but that really shouldn't scare you because this is his third team in four years, and with the exception of his injury plague 2016 season, he's consistently produced with all of the teams he's played on. You know you're guilty of recency bias since everybody is counting out a guy who finished in the top 10 in 2014 and the top 20 in 2015. And like I said, he's in wide receiver 4 territory. So much value is made to be had with drafting Jeremy Macklin this year. So if you're in the late rounds, definitely consider Macklin. There's a strong chance he returns value for you and your team. And for this next wide receiver we have on the top five late round pick list is one I know that a lot of our subscribers are not fans of us adding. And it's for good reason. This player has not really produced as of yet. He's unproven and has always been labeled a breakout and always been disappointing. I think you know where this is going. It's Devontae Parker of the Miami Dolphins. So the reason we're mentioning this player to you is because when we're in the late rounds, we mentioned it, we want upside. Parker has that type of upside. And this is actually the year that he's coming into the draft season at the best value that I've seen it. Would we really be all that surprised if he led the team in touchdowns this year? Kenny Stills did it last year with nine, but the previous year, Kenny Stills only had three touchdowns on the season. Parker has already tied Landry last year with four, which I think we all can still agree four touchdowns is underwhelming, but Parker and the whole team had the highest percentage of red zone targets. That indicates that he is being utilized in the red zone. He is an option, and he actually is the bigger body on that team. So Julius Thomas, he is a new player coming in that could potentially take some red zone targets away from him, but how many games can you really expect Thomas to play in this year if I put the over under in 10 games would you guys take the over or would you take the under let me know in the comment section below I put it at 10 I'll take the push but back to Parker it's no secret if you look up anything on Parker all the reports coming out he's primed for a big year we don't like to make opinions based off of speculation especially coming from within the organization but the reality is this is a gifted player and the reality is the only thing that's been holding this super talent back has been his own commitment to playing football and committing to practicing. Apparently, for the first time in his young career, he's showing that type of drive. This is what was expected out of him initially when he was drafted out of Louisville with the 14th overall pick in 2015. If you look up his numbers on playerprofiler.com, He's a freak, man. He's He's got the ability. He has the intangible. Now, the biggest limitation to Parker this year, the upside's there, but the limitation is going to be in Ryan Tannehill's ability to move the ball. While Tannehill did have his highest completion rate in his whole career, he really took a dip in other numbers like yardage and touchdowns. These are the types of things that happen when you're learning a new offense. Adam Gase came in, and you've heard me say it before, Adam Gase is the real deal. He's a great coach and he's great with quarterbacks. I really see big improvement from Tannehill coming into this year as well. How many first-year coaches come into a subpar team, start 1-4, and four, 
only to turn it around and win seven of their next eight games before Tannehill being knocked out with an injury, I think that deserves some respect. If that doesn't show good coaching, I don't know what does. I have big expectations for the team, and besides Landry, Parker is really the only one that I want to own on my fantasy team this year. Next, we have my personal favorite player on this list, and that's Marvin Jones of the Detroit Lions. ESPN has him ranked 53rd wide receiver. Fantasy Football Calculator has him ranked the 46th wide receiver. As we know, he was really a bust last year. Unless you traded him away after the first few weeks, he really kind of got screwed. He ended the season 34th in targets, and for any receiver, you need to have targets. 34th in targets is just not going to cut it. Now, Tate, on the other hand, he was 14th in targets, so it's pretty clear to say that Jones would never be the target leader on this team, but that really doesn't matter. Jones can still succeed on his own. Stafford is top 10 in attempts in the league, and that's going to continue on to this year. Their run game, while it should be a little improved with Amir Abdullah back and some additions they made to the line, it's still not going to be good enough to be a rushing team. They've been at the bottom of the league and rushing for many years that's not going to change this year jones really struggled with drops he actually dropped seven of 62 catchable targets he had more targets than that but of those targets 62 of them were actually deemed catchable he dropped seven that's over 10 percent, and that's really unacceptable but it was really surprising how inaccurate stafford was when targeting jones only 61 percent of marvin jones targets were deemed catchable compare that to golden tate 75 that easily can be attributed to jones playing more on the outside having a deeper average depth of target but even when you compare that to similar players that play on the outside and are considered downfield targets like Jones is. You have players like Amari Cooper, he comes in at 69% catchable target rate. Deshaun Jackson comes in at a 70%. Mike Wallace, 72%. Travis Benjamin, 73%. So essentially, these quarterbacks are giving these players better opportunities to make plays downfield. And these splits really aren't that small. You're comparing 61% to 73%. That's an increase of 12%. So you want to take a look at the quarterbacks, right? Out of the five quarterbacks that have thrown to them, Stafford actually ranked third in deep pass accuracy and second in completion percentage. So for Jones to have such a low catchable target percentage means that this is more of an outlier in that clearly Stafford and Jones did not have the timing down on routes. Coming into the second year, you will see that increase creep closer to that 70% mark. They're building up the chemistry. It was the first year that they played together. They had a good start, but it fell off and it fell off quick. I expect that the work that they're doing in this offseason will help bring that back to a normal level. And if you think about the difference between 60% and 70%, that's an increase of 10% of catchable targets. For a deep play threat like Jones, he could turn any one of those targets into the type of big plays that made everyone believe Jones was a high-end wide receiver one at the start of the 2016 season. It really only takes one target for Jones to hit a 60-yard touchdown. We've seen it before. So long story short, with Abdullah back, the offensive line improved, this team should be able to move the ball more efficiently and open up more opportunities for Jones. And you're virtually getting him for free. He's a wide receiver four to wide receiver five right now coming off the board. That means he's on your bench. It's not going to cost you anything to grab him. And he's probably one of the only wide receivers that I can say that's on this list that could be a wide receiver one. I'm not saying it's likely, but we've seen it in the first few Few weeks of the 2016 season he can post those numbers where else can you find that in the wide receiver four to five range so the last wide receiver we have to talk about is one that's definitely been moving up our draft boards recently and that's tyrell williams of the los angeles chargers espn has him ranked at wide receiver 60 fantasy football calculator wide receiver 48 you're going to hear us tell it to you now and you're probably going to hear it a lot more before the season starts we're going to tell you guys to go grab tyrell williams whenever you can he should be a target on everyone's draft boards at this point i think we've all heard about the news that mike williams may have season ending surgery but even if he doesn't he has already missed valuable time to build a connection with rivers this connection that tyrell spent all last season building it was very clear coming into this offseason that the biggest threat to targets from tyrell was mike williams not because mike williams would in instantly be a huge part of this offense but because they had such a heavy investment in him and Keenan Allen's clearly going to have his role they need to get Mike Williams involved because he is going to be the receiver of the future now back to Allen he will be the main target for Rivers while healthy but if he can't stay healthy this year 
he may be hard pressed to even have a roster spot on the Chargers in the 2018 season. At this point, I'm not going to be drafting Keenan Allen unless I get a super value on him. I know that this offense can produce good numbers, but I think the tough schedule will hurt Keenan Allen more than it will hurt Phillip Rivers or the other receivers. Phillip Rivers can find the open receiver. And we saw that last year, Tyrell stepping in for him. He was really a beast averaging 13.6 fantasy points per game and only having three games under nine fantasy points. So it's safe to say he was extremely reliable week over week. Definitely one of the better waiver wire additions of the whole 2016 season. Coming into this year though, his target share is definitely going to take a dip, but the value is still there. You're talking ESPN wide receiver 60, fantasy football calculator wide receiver 48. That's a wide receiver four or wide receiver five, back end four or back end five. Another player that's virtually free, not gonna cost you anything to grab, a good stash and you're talking about the number two receiver in an offense led by Philip Rivers he is a great quarterback and I did mention that the tough passing schedule will hurt Keenan Allen and I think that's actually going to play to the benefit of Tyrell Williams now there is a lot of players there's Hunter Henry there's Antonio Gates there's Keenan Allen Dontrell Inman Travis Benjamin the list goes on but I think it's pretty clear that Philip Rivers and Tyrell Williams built something special last year I'm hard-pressed to act like that's going to completely go away his targets may dip but the opportunities will be there. Should anything happen to Keenan Allen, Williams would instantly be that wide receiver too that we saw from last year, and until then, he's a weekly flex play with upside. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for the top five wide receivers that you should be targeting late. Make sure to add all of these guys to your draft board. They're all kind of in that wide receiver four, wide receiver five range. So make sure you keep an eye out for them and base your picks on your roster construction. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe if you're new. You don't want to miss out our content. We're releasing our rankings for the next few weeks. All that information will be available to you. If you want to download our rankings, go on to the website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. If you want our premium tier based rankings you can sign up to become a premium member and we'll get those over to you and access to the facebook group so i really hope you enjoyed this video thanks for stopping by and we'll catch you on the next one